Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with Rupan the Third, part one, episode number eleven and twelve. All right, before we start, happy new year to each and every one of you. And uh, yeah, so okay, so the previous two episodes that we re uh, that I reacted to, it was episode nine and ten. Episode nine kind of gives us an interesting backstory, a little bit of a backstory of Fujiko. Uh, which we at least I never like you know got before because like you know I, I, I only reacted to the movies and I thought that uh, Fujiko's backstory was only in uh, the woman named F F Fujiko Mine I think uh, I thought that that only had her backstory or something I did not know part one also had her backstory so I was quite pleasantly surprised and we really have some background on her now like you know like we we never knew what she was like you know Rupan himself says that is she a thief is she a spy who is she like you know in the intro but this time we actually get something something concrete and we know that she was um an assassin yeah an assassin and she worked with someone called Poon and you know we got a little uh like you know we got acquainted with that guy and he tried to take Fujiko back but you know like a lot of things happened and Rupan was able to get Fujiko back and Fujiko uh, shot him because you know he otherwise he would have shot Lupan so all that stuff we really see like you know like like that that was a really emotionally packed episode especially because this is Fujiko we are talking about who never shows her emotions and uh, yeah like that was episode number nine episode number 10 we get uh like you know the the whole counterfeit money thing we get involved in that rupan wanted someone who can make that and he went and uh found out someone uh like i, I forgot the guy's name i don't remember his name but he said that yeah i'm i'm, I'm not doing stuff like this anymore someone else came in they tried to like you know take uh like you know like and then like you know they started fighting for him this and that <laughs> The, and by the end of it, like, you know, the, the, the lady who was taking, uh, like, you know, was the master, not master, but uh, who was the, yeah, kind of like a master for uh, him. He was calling him a lady, milady or something like that. Uh, she got shot. I forgot all the names in that ep episode. I, I don't remember any of the names. Uh, he, she got shot. And obviously, like, you know, like she, like he, he, he lost the reason for you know being like you know for continuing to live and he just like you know killed himself alongside uh uh you know like the lady's dead body as well like that was a kind of like a sad thing while rupan and then the, that other guy was just fighting with each other <laughs> like you know in the, in, in the middle of the snow while uh fujiko tried to like you know go and get the guy like you know to make counterfeit bills for her but when she saw that, like, you know, he, like, you know, killed himself, she, she lost interest and went away. And it was like a very, what can I say, a very weird type of an episode because, you know, like a lot of things were happening. Like, you know, there's this one portion which was very sad and emotional, like the story of that guy who really wanted to get out of this mess, you know, but always past keeps coming back to you that was happening while at the same time there was this goofy portion where rupan and that guy was just like you know fighting like little kids and then when everything was over he was like bragging to jigen he was like oh look what i did i like you know punched him like this i did that you know like like a little kid there was bragging and like you know <laughs> very <laughs> what can i say like you know, a lot of things were happening a lot of emotions all at the same time so yeah anyways uh let's get started this episode number 11 so yeah i'll be putting in the subtitles and the timer here think it whichever is your preference and let's get started okay here's the countdown three two one go okay All right. <coughs> okay, I think one of the comments um 
not one but a few of the comments kind of mentioned i think episode 11 is directed by miyazaki or is, is it episode 12 like the person who has been directed up until now he won't be involved in this anymore i think like i'm going to check out my the comments again like you know i forgot to check out before i started watching it um but yeah that, that's how i remember like you know this episode i think it's by miyazaki and the next one is not by miyazaki which would show us the contrast of how these two are like you know like how different the story goes like i'm going to keep an eye out for that let me see Oh, Zenigata. They're looking for Rupan or something? Oh my god, wait, what? Oh! The bridge just blows off? I don't think this is Rupan. When the seventh bridge falls, Namban me no Hashiga Ochirutoki. Really? I don't think Rupan did this. Fifth? No, I, I don't think that's Ruban. I refuse to believe that. Oh, he, he hurt his hand. I don't think he's involved in. There you go. Maybe there's a like a pattern or something. Armored truck. Oh. Oh. Um. Maybe it's involved with that or something. Like the w way they're destroying the. There you go. They want them to direct to some other place. Oh my god. That's why they're destroying the bridges. They're luring them somewhere to take them a particular direction. There you go. Okay. <laughs> This is a security? Two police officers? Oh, this guy might... Wait, who? Oh no, there, there he is. That's Zenigata, isn't it? Oh my god. Is this Rupan? <laughs> I think so. Nice. No, wait, who's that? Uh, no, this is not Lupin. Who is this? Oh, this is a terrorist. Okay. Or maybe... No, no, wait. Oh, no, no, it is... It is Jigen. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay, I was right. Ah, remote activated bomb. <laughs> First, we need to defuse the bomb. Return. <laughs> Just wax him into the. Okay, there you go. <laughs> if you knew. Why are they still waiting? Oh, he's, they're waiting for him. Okay. Yeah, obviously. Oh. Oh, this... Okay. Okay, so this is the... Everyone's looking at him. Yeah, I'm sure that's a pretense. A 
Okay. Is that a bomb? Oh my god. What the? Spoon? Ma- Oh! Okay. This is no one here. It's like Jigen only. They'll get suspicious, whoever. Okay. Okay. Up. Up. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this is slow. This boat is slow. Oh my god. <laughs> oh no. Oh wait. Oh, okay. That's their hideout. <laughs> All right. Oh, what the? <laughs> oh my God, he knows. Oh, wow, that was a trap. <laughs> Hmm. So that was a trap for him? Oh my god, Jigen also got captured. <laughs> oh boy. Oh! Wow, that's a bulletproof glass. Yeah. Oh, that's why. Armored car disappear. Yeah. Put the blame on him. Hmm. Ah, uh, Kekakudori. <laughs> He's not <even> amused. <laughs> oh my god, I feel like Fujiko is here somewhere. <laughs> Wait, is that Fujiko? Who is that? I think that's Fuziko in disguise. Or maybe not. She doesn't look like Fuziko. Or maybe. What the? Oh my god, is it an electric chair or something? <gasps> oh my god, that is, it's even worse than that. Oh my god. I wouldn't be surprised if that is Fujiko in disguise. <laughs> what the? 
Oh, hey, stop! What the hell? Give us a little bit of time to... Oh my god! God damn. Hmm. Yeah, so you want us to blow it out or something? Oh, never mind. Wait, so... Oh, they had a backup. Yeah, okay. Great. Okay. Oh. Hmm. Six eleven. Wow, they had it all planned out. And this is where we start our attack or something? Oh, they're going to trap them in or something? Oh my god. What was the point? Oh, I'm guessing I'll take the money. Yeah. Amateur. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure he has a plan. Oh. Wait, what? What type of a... Uh... That's not Fujiko's voice. But maybe she's just changing it. But her face looks like Fujiko's face. Lisa. I feel like that is Fujiko. <laughs> <laughs> mm. yeah obviously that's uh, very obvious <laughs> yeah let's get our sleep while we can you know because boy it'll be a busy day the next day Okay, I'm sure Zeniga will be here somewhere trying to um, protect the thing or trying to catch Rupan. We kind of zoomed in onto the suitcase. So. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> All right, time to do a job. <laughs> you know what? I I got a weird feeling that inside the suitcase there's <laughs> Zenigata in it. I don't know why, but 
<laughs> That'll be kind of funny. I don't know how he he would fit himself inside that suitcase, but you know, <laughs> I don't know. All right. Anytime, anytime they're going to. Okay, we need to shoot the tires, that'll do it, I think. <laughs> it's weird that this is like only one car coming, like I, I, I expected a lot of more guards and stuff, you know, in, in, in patrol cars or something. Well. <laughs> All right, there you go. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh my god. This is right in the water. Oh, and on the boat. Wow, so this is Rupan's plan. Nice. No excess casualty and stuff. Okay. <laughs> I feel like there's something else in there. No, there is money in there. All right, here we go. What the why? Great. Hmm. <laughs> wow. Okay. Come on, let's see what Rupan's idea is. <laughs> yeah, I'll keep my promise. Jin, you know what? I think Jin could just shoot off his hand and, you know, like... Oh, God. Great. I think that's a dummy. That's not her, that's a dummy. Did he really check? That's a dummy. That's a dummy. Ugh. Oh boy. My god. Are you stupid? You have a girl in... Zenigata! What? Zenigata! Open your eyes! What the hell? Zenigata! Oh my god! Wait, what the? Oh, he did. <laughs> he planned it. <laughs> Does he realize that? I don't think he realizes. Oh my god, the handcuffs will be a problem.
Wow, you suck. <laughs> wow, you really suck. Like compared to Rupan, I'm not saying that he sucks, but compared to Rupan, he I'm sure he can just take a shot now. Like it is pretty difficult to actually shoot in a moving water, like you know, speedboat, you know. There you go. I think that's Fujiko. Uh, uh. Oh my god. Oh. Uh, wait, what the? <laughs> yeah. Okay, maybe that is not Fujiko, like, you know. Yeah, that's not Fujiko. Okay, <laughs> all all this episode, I thought that was Fujiko because you know, like she somehow, <laughs> like you know, she somehow always. <laughs> oh, okay, that's it. All right, so. <sighs> this episode um yeah i can i think this was this was the one which was made uh you know directed by miyazaki isn't it let me uh just a second uh rupan three part one let me just check i don't know if i'll be able to find it but hmm Okay, uh... Okay, here we go. Uh, episode 9 was the final episode that Osumi had full creative control of. Alright, unlike Osumi, Miyazaki and Takahata, uh, Takahata uh, agreed to make several changes to the series, many of which were based on their own perspective. Yeah, this, that, okay. Um... Alright, so... Okay, let me just... Okay, so here we go. Episode 11. Yeah, there you go. Hayao Miyazaki Isao Takahata. And episode 12. There you go. Ma Masaki Osumi. So, like, I remember the comment. Uh, episode 11. It's fully, like, you know, produced by Miyazaki and Takahata. While <coughs> the next one, which I'll react to, is episode 12. <coughs> Uh, it it is uh, Osumi's, and and I think it's the it's the last one, or maybe no, is episode twelve the last one by Osumi? I think I think so. Mm, okay, where is that part? Yeah. Okay, yeah, there you go. So this one, uh, I, I, like, you know, in, in the previous episode, uh, I, I was, I, like, now this, now that I'm watching this, I can clearly make the difference now. Like, this episode had a lot of, uh, what can I say? Like, I don't know if I'm, I'm, I'll be able to, uh, you know, like, convey what I'm, like, you know, like, the way I felt it was different. But the previous episodes that I've been watching in part one, it, we saw Rupan as this type of, uh, you know, very impulsive, you know, doing stuff in a very casual manner, you know, like taking rash decisions, like, you know, killing people, this and that, uh, left and right. While here, this episode can clearly tell, like, shows us how he is more calm headed, you know, he thinks more. You know, when when we saw that that portion that where he got to know that a lot of other people are going to get involved in this, a lot of other people will die in the plan. You know, he said that, no, we're doing this in my way, which showed that he is concerned about the normal people getting involved in this. 
he doesn't want to kill unnecessarily so this is another big thing like i feel like if this was um like you know if this was done in the same style as the previous episodes he probably would at that moment he probably would have been like yeah it's okay let's go on with that plan <coughs> So this is just the most notable differences in this episode I can see, and this this does feel like you know that that Ghibli vibe. It has that you know as I said like it's it's a lot more calm like you know thought out and you know uh, like it's, it's it's very pleasing the the pace the pace is very pleasing like I always loved Ghibli movies uh, pace you know the the pace that it would go on it was neither too fast nor too slow uh, while in like you know in the first episodes. Uh, first, uh, like, you know, the, the nine episodes, uh, like, the pace was very, what can I say, um, different, like, it was, like, very irregular, you know, like, suddenly, like, something was happening, and then suddenly, like, you know, shifts to another perspective, and suddenly another one, like, it, it was going in that manner, while this, like, this episode clearly shows us how this is so different from the previous episodes, and, um, I really liked the first few episodes as well, you know, especially there are there are a few couple of episodes in, in the first part portion of this season that I really loved. For example, that episode with in the, in the prison where Lupin tricked everyone, that episode, uh, a few other episodes as well. So like I, 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 I kind of got accustomed to that style as well. But this style is also very pleasing, like, you know, like and like I, I like this, uh, what do you call this, this type of a virtuous type of a person Lupin is actually. Uh, this this personality, this uh, type of personality, Rupan, I also really like. So, like, I I have to say, I'll be honest here. I did bother me a little bit the first few episodes uh, where we saw Rupan, like, you know, unnecessarily killing. Because as I said, I actually like, you know, started Rupan from Cagliostro, and from Cagliostro, I watched all the movies, which really showed us Rupan in a very different perspective. You know, he's uh, he does not unnecessarily kill. You know, he is kind towards. Um, people who are not involved in this, you know, in, in this, like, you know, under underworld, like, you know, this criminal thing. And, um, like, he's virtuous. Like, you know, I, I got accustomed to Rupan in that manner. So suddenly in the first part, you know, like seeing in the first episode, Rupan just killing people just like that, you know, and not even batting an eye. It did bother me a little bit, as I said, you know. So, like, I, like, but, but there are still a few parts of Rupan that I also kind of liked in that portion. Like, you know, he, he was a lot more impulsive and it was kind of uh, nice in its own way, you know. And, uh, but yeah, like, I, like, in a, in a whole, I like this Rupan a lot more than that Rupan, the, the first few episodes Rupan. Uh, because as I said, like, you know, I, I, I got introduced to Rupan from Cagliostro. So, like, you know, the, the first impressions that I got from Rupan that kind of got stuck in my head and suddenly, like, you know, seeing him in another light is kind of a little bit difficult for me. So, I'm, 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 I really like this episode, you know, the, the sudden change that we got to see from episode 10 and episode <coughs> 9 <coughs> to this episode. Yeah, I, 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 I like that. And I've, I'm, like, I'm quite a big Ghibli movie fan. So obviously I'll be a little bit more biased towards this. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, this episode, uh, we can see that uh, there's someone who was trying to blow up the bridges. And, you know, and another thing that I liked about this episode is that it, it like, you know, you, you actually had to kind of think about it. You know, like, like when they were telling us that, oh, these, like, you know, they were like blowing up bridges, like, you know, this is the sixth bridge, no, not the fifth bridge, now they'll blow up the sixth bridge, we had to think, like, you know, why are they doing this? And Rupan kind of, like, you know, thought about that thing as well, and he says that, like, and, and the conclusion that I also came at that moment was that they are blowing up bridges because they want to direct, you know, that, that, that uh, car to someplace else where something could happen. You know, like that's why they're blowing up all the bridges to make only one uh, path, um, what do you call it, <clears throat> accessible. And uh, that's what I'm talking about, you know, like the, this thinking part was also there. And, uh, okay, we, like, you know, we see, like, you know, what actually happens here. Uh, this guy, the mastermind, he, he actually, so he basically, did quite a few things at the same time like he, he probably killed two birds in one stone because he <coughs> number one he blew up all the bridges to direct the car uh, into one place in, into that ghost town that's number one 
Number two, in the process of doing that, he was able to make everyone suspect Rupan and put the blame on Rupan. You know, number two, there's another thing that he was able to accomplish from that. He was able to attract Rupan's attention where she, he could lure him in and he was able to um, blackmail him like this so that, you know, like he could use Rupan to do the actual deed and then again, like, you know, blame everything on Rupan and get away with it. So basically he, he tried to kill three birds in one stone. The first two he was successful in doing. The third one, where he tried to put the blame on Rupan, kind of went a little bit, you know, um, a little bit you know, differently than he expected. And unfortunately, he died in the end. So, <laughs> yeah, like, I like it. Like, you know, this, this guy will use his brain. And I'm quite impressed by the way he actually tried to trap Rupan. It was, it was a pretty, like, you know, solid plan, I have to say. <coughs> but... Obviously, yeah, like, you know, like, he, he was alone, like, he, he at least needed a bodyguard, I think. <laughs> like, you know, he, he's not accustomed to shoot. I guess that's why he's, like, you know, was missing every shot over there. And it's a lot of difficult, you know, unless and until you're trained, you know, to shoot in a moving motorboat. And, uh, alright. So, now, here's another portion that I found, like, you know, I kind of thought that something else was going to happen, but it did not happen. Which is, I thought that girl was Fujiko in disguise, you know. I thought like, you know, like always, like, you know, every time, like, you know, every episode, we somehow meet Fujiko in weird manners. So I thought maybe this is Fujiko in disguise, actually. But turns out it was not, which I was kind of surprised about by the end. I thought like in the end, we would see her suddenly, like, you know, pull off her wig or something. She'd be like, ha, got you or something. <laughs> like, you know, and, and <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, that did not happen. This is a, a different girl. Uh, what was the name? I forgot. Anyway, whatever. <clears throat> I doubt we'll meet her again. <laughs> like that's how it goes, you know, in Rupan. We never meet the correct characters again, which we... <laughs> These are not recurring characters. So, yeah. Alright, so anyways, um... <clears throat> that was that. This guy blackmailed Rupan in actually doing the deed. And when, as I said, like, you know, like, uh, when he said that yeah we're going to do it in this way a lot of people will die this and that rupan was like no if you want me to do stuff i'll do it in my way and <clears throat> that really shows that yeah he he really did not want to involve other people which is a, like you know, which kind of shows us the contrast from episode 9 to episode like, and this episode so <clears throat> not only episode 9 but the first few episodes and this episode where he rupan here is a lot more responsible a lot more you know, like, um, honorable, you can say, has a moral compass, and <clears throat> a lot more mature, you can say, as well, yeah, so, like, I have to say, like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people, like, I've seen this in, like, you know, anime community as well, like, there's, like, you know, a lot of people really do not like how straightforward good characters actually are, main characters, like, there's a lot of people who actually kind of like the anti-hero thing, you know, like, they're like, oh, this guy, this guy's a wimp, you know, he's the main protagonist, he, he's just a nice, kind guy, you know, and there's nothing, and while they kind of, like, you know, uh, hype up characters who has this edgy type of personality and they kind of like you know like this anti-hero type they kind of hype up that type of characters they're like oh look at this character this is so cool unlike all the other uh, you know like uh, normal uh, main protagonists who do nothing uh, who are just kind uh, like you know th this guy is so cool look look he, what he's doing he's he can like easily shoot the main uh, like you know uh, the villain in, like you know and uh, like you know he doesn't care like, I like this type of character. I've seen the, this type of thing a lot in anime. Like, you know, in the anime community. Like, the people have this weird fascination towards um, anti-heroes. And I have to say, like, I, I neither prefer... Uh, like, you know, it's not that I don't like anti-heroes, but I prefer the, these type of normal... Like, you know, people who are a lot more... What do you call it? Kind uh, and honorable. These type of characters. I, I like these type of characters. Even if you call them boring, you know, I like this type of straightforward good guys. Like, um, I do enjoy, like, you know, uh, certain instances of characters who are badass and maybe an anti-hero. But most of the time, I prefer these type of characters. This type of normal, <laughs> boring, if you call them, you know, main protagonists. So, that's why, you know, like, I, I prefer this Rupan a lot more than that Rupan. 
and uh, I don't know, I like you know this, this like this. I I I I really like this type of a personality, you know, where uh, <coughs> you know that you are strong enough to do these type of things, but you don't do because those are wrong. And this Rupan is probably the prime example of that. He knows he can do a lot of things, you know. He he can probably like you know just uh, like he has the skills and the brains to pull off a lot of like, you know bad things. He can do that, but he doesn't do it. Like that's what is kind of interesting for me for Lupin. It's like you know, like he he has that moral compass, and that's what I kind of like. <coughs> just just my preference, you know. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so yeah, that was that. That was this episode. Uh, was there anything else? Let me check. Oh yeah, they like you know the the whole thing that he did in the end, where he tricked the uh, car to fall into that boat, and you know like he used that boat to kind of go away this guy he he tried to you know trick them by calling zenigata and saying that oh like rupan is here come on come here quickly now obviously rupan had something like you know like all already up his sleeve he kind of tied the whole i think that's called a pier yeah that 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 wooden part he tied that to the boat and he knew something was going to happen <laughs> he took precautions for it so <clears throat> Like, I, I saw that coming from a mile away, you know, like I saw that he, I, I knew that he would go, he was going to try to trick Rupan in some way and he was a dummy or something. So because the hostage was like a sure way for him to get out of this situation. Obviously, he, he, he won't hand her over to Rupan that easily. So, yeah, he used that dummy there and took the boat, was going away. Zenigata comes in. Now, here's the part. <laughs> I have to say, like, you know, like, I like Zenigata always kind of, like, you know, like, following Rupan and being so passionate about Rupan. But he really, at that moment at least, he really needed to get, keep, you know, like, his eyes open. He blindly just rushed in and tried to get Rupan. He didn't, I think he didn't even realize that there was, like, a girl tied in that guy's boat. I'm sure he did not realize that just because Rupan was there. He just, like, jumped on Rupan and he was like, oh, caught you, Rupan. And then that guy says that, oh, this guy, this is the guy, you know. And he was like, oh, thank you very much. He said something like that, I think he, he expressed. Where is that part? Um, okay, there you go. This, the guy says, please arrest him. I have photos to prove it. There you go. And then <laughs> he, he handcuffs him, Zenigata, and he says, thanks for the tip off, sir. Like... <laughs> You should pay attention, Zenigata. There's there's a girl just tied, you know, in that boat beside him. <laughs> Unless and until the girl actually spoke, like she didn't even realize what was happening there. The girl did then started screaming and said that, "Oh, Rupan is the good guy here. Like you know, he helped us out. He tried to help me. This is the bad guy." I wonder what Zenigata would have done there. I'm sure he would have like you know like um probably went for like you know probably would have chased that guy at that moment but uh, you know Zenga didn't need to do that because Rupan already had everything you know <laughs> everything um properly um you know prepared and uh, the boat was tied to the pier and it just broke off Rupan kind of used that as a surfboard and then the guy starts shooting at Rupan and obviously unless and until you're a trained professional you cannot do that like you know the, the boat is moving Rupan is moving in that in the waves and obviously you cannot shoot like that unless and until you're as trained as Rupan or Jigen. So yeah, <coughs> none of his shots <coughs> actually connected and Rupan just, you know, like defeated him in one shot with handcuffs on. <laughs> and yeah, by the end of it, uh, you know, everything goes well. Uh, the girl was saved, <laughs> Rupan goes away, Zenigata is like, Ah, I lost him again. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that was good. I like this episode, you know. Like, I, I, I can clearly see the difference, you know, uh, in uh, Miyazaki's work and um, Osumi, Osumi's work. Like, you know, the difference in them. So, yeah. all right, uh, let's start the next one. This one, I, I think this one's like made by, uh, like, you know, produced by Osumi. I think this is the last one. Uh, after this, everything will be by uh, Miyazaki. I think so. So yeah, anyways, let's get started. This is episode number 12. So yeah, I'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here. Sync it to whichever is your preference. And let's start. Okay, here's the countdown. Three, two, one, go. <clears throat> hmm. 
I realized that we like in the previous episode we were back to the like you know the duo like Jigen and Rupan there were no there were no Goemon no Fujiko and obviously Zenigata was also there but we kind of went back to that Okay, let's watch. Okay, what is this place? What the? What's happening? But who's this? This is a statue. Oh, wait. Oh, what's happening? Someone's outside. <clears throat> Is that Fujiko? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, that's Fujiko. Oh, my God. Oh, boy. Um, okay. Okay. Sumito. Okay. <clears throat> oh, no. Yeah, this is a... Oh no! Oh. Okay, yeah, that's a problem. Okay, I feel like she's going to do some... Oh, nice! Who had the last laugh? Daraga Sayoni Warattaka. Okay. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> this old man's pretty happy. Oh! Yeah. Okay, so Rupan is also supposed to come here, that means. Oh boy. And she doesn't even have her bike anymore. No mobile. <coughs> What's that weird sound? Oh, I think it's a bag. No, that, that's a boots, I think. Okay. Is someone in there? <laughs> Look who is here.
<laughs> Small world. <laughs> One of the statues. Financial problems. <clears throat> hmm. No, it's like a snow snowstorm is going on. How? Okay. What the? Wait, what? <clears throat> you you don't have people and you try what? What's wrong with you? <clears throat> you don't have enough people. You just call for reinforcements and now you're doing this. Oh, that's what he tried to do. It's the statues. Uh. Okay. Hmm. Well. Oh. Okay, this is the last one. <laughs> I think I will. <laughs> this guy's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, where's Jigen? <laughs> okay. What? Yeah. Oh my god, here's the reinforcements. Wait, so Jigen didn't come this time? That's kind of unusual. Oh boy, reinforcements. Hmm. Wow, there's a lot of them. Wait, is this Jigen? There you go, I was thinking, where was he? Like, I've never seen Rupan go somewhere alone. Jigen is always there. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> yeah, can you bring it to me? Oh my god. <laughs> wow. Just burned his face. <laughs> uh. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> Straps. <laughs> In the middle of the... <laughs> My god. 
Okay, calm down. <laughs> no, <I'm just> inside. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, wow. <laughs> Oh my god, I didn't think, okay. <laughs> oh no. Oh! <laughs> Is that Fujiko? Oh my god. Oh no, it's not Fujiko. I thought Fujiko did that. Um, okay. Hmm. Wait, where's Fujiko? Okay. Oh my god. I love how the the background music is so chill with everything happening, you know? Oh my god, I Fujiko's inside that. Great. Or maybe not, who knows? Okay. <coughs> oh. Bye. Okay, let's see what he does. <laughs> um Oh my god, he wants everything. <laughs> oh my god. He's like, oh my god, he's like, what's inside that? Oh wow, that's what they're doing. So he, yeah, so he basically wants the money and the thing as well. Okay, this is the one, okay. Okay, look, what is he planning? Like, I wonder. Wow, okay, that's kind of... Uh, what is he planning? I'm still not understanding what he's trying to do. I'm talking about Rupan. 
Oh, wow, great. <laughs> That's what happens if you put out the... Oh, God, here we go. Oh my god, it's, it's rigged with bomb. I don't understand, what did he try to do by bringing Fujiko here? Like... Oh... Oh, oh my god, oh that, that tricked them, okay. Yeah, obviously, he, he's that type of a guy. <sighs> okay. Um... Oh my god, he really got blown up. Th I think this episode is all over the place. <laughs> well guess you need to get you need to get used to that oh my god what what happened whoa wait what oh my god <laughs> they're using oh my god I forgot what these things are called. Um, Panzer, something like I forgot. It's like, oh no, these are mortars. Yeah, I remember them. These are mort mortars. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, and who will have the thing with... Okay. I don't think she will. Or will she? Okay. Okay, there you go. What? Wait, what is that? How many houses does this thing have? Like, they've been <laughs> blowing up houses for quite a while. Oh, mines. Oh my god. Wow. Well, there, there you go. Everything's over.
Um, <laughs> okay. Oh my god, yeah. Oh, oh, that's how, okay. Yeah. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> she got what she wanted, so... Oh, treasure map. Wait, what? <laughs> oh, no. Oh no, it's going to get whacked in the face. <laughs> oh, is that the real one? He really won everything by the end. <laughs> he really had the last laugh, my god. Okay, is that the end? Okay, wow, my <laughs> this episode was over all over the place. I feel like you know, like there's a lot of things happening which really didn't make sense in the beginning, but by the end of it, everything kind of makes sense, you know. Like, I, I really don't understand why F Rupan actually brought Fujiko all the way to the ca cabin. Like, what was the point of that? Like, I don't know, like that, that part really confused me. Like, why did she, like, you know, he bring her there? I don't know if I'm missing something or maybe anyways uh, okay so <clears throat> this episode here we see um, Fujiko and Rupan as well in the you know uh, both of them trying to get like those statues while in the end we get to know that Fujiko's actual uh, target was not the statues but the map so so a lot of things have so basically uh, Rupan kind of like you know kind of prepared for this whole thing and Fujiko was also kind of preparing for this whole thing by like you know tricking Rupan like Rupan thought that yeah I, I tricked Fujiko and I, I was able to you know take advantage of her this time but then we see in the end that was also within Fujiko's calculations as she knew that he was going to do something like that and that's why you know she just kept quiet and by when time came she he, she tried to not tried but she grabbed the maps while in the end we see that the old man was also anticipating that where he kind of switched the maps like my god like this is like this one plan which someone else was anticipating which was being anticipated by someone else like <laughs> something like that okay um this episode here i think this is the first time we actually see Rupan actually tr like you know actively trying to trick Fujiko like uh, all these episodes I've never seen Rupan actually try to trick her like this like you know here he basically kind of grabs her and just like you know ties her up <laughs> and takes her with him so which is kind of surprising I I've never seen any yeah n none of the other episodes I've ever seen him doing something like this you know uh, like this is something that I would I, like you know it wouldn't surprise me if Fujiko did something like this but seeing Rupan do this like I, I was very surprised here <laughs> like he he does stuff like this he tricks Fujiko I've seen him tricking Fujiko quite a lot of times but not like this you know like <laughs> you know, just like tying her up and taking her in a like you know in a sack like he never did something like this ever before so 
Okay, um, that was that. And then there's this uh, criminal organization who had their eyes on the statues because they were financially, um, you know, like kind of they're financially they were having problems. And uh, the, this guy, the, the leader guy, like I, I forgot his name, Hayate, I think that was his name. Yeah, I, I don't. Yeah, I think it was Hayate. Anyways, he, he, he tries his best to get everything and, you know, like trick uh, all of them and like, you know, try to change the situation for his own, like, you know, benefit. Because at the beginning he was like, okay, uh, we got here before Rupan, we can get this. But then Fuju kind of like, you know, uh, you know, like kind of makes everything more complicated. She takes one of the, uh, you know, one of the statues and gets away. And then he, he comes up with a plan that, you know, what we'll do, uh, obviously Fujika and Rupan is going to come here. So we're going to, like, you know, lay a trap for them. You old man, you're going to, like, you know, sell everything. Uh, no, you're going to sell the, the, the statue to Rupan and get all the money. And then when he'll go away, we'll use the bomb to blow up his uh, motorbike or snowmobile, whatever you call it. And <clears throat> get the money and the, like, you know, statue as well. So <laughs> that was the plan. While Rupan obviously did not anticipate that, but he, you know, he did, and like, and I don't know what he did there. I, I like this, like up. Even now, I'm kind of getting confused why he brought Fujiko with her, uh, with him, over there. Like, just a second. Let me. Okay, yeah, here it is. He kind of throws all the money towards that old man, and. Okay. Okay, the old man says that this is one of the sister statues and the old man says the other one is Rupan opens the bag and takes Fujiko out and he says like see Oh, she's the one who stole it. And now they're reunited. Okay, like I don't know, like, why did he bring Fujiko here? Like, what was the point of it? Rupa starts laughing, like, Fujiko says that you tricked me. You Okay, you finding me in the cave was all part of the plan. I set it, set it up all from the start. This portion is really weird. I don't know why he even brought Fujiko here. Like, he could have easily brought only the statue with him. But I guess he didn't want to leave her alone or something. Maybe that's why he brought her with him. Who knows? <laughs> but anyways, yeah, that's what happens. And Fujiko also anticipated that she she had her other plan. She didn't obviously she didn't want the statues. She she wanted the maps. So yeah, and I don't know why even Rupan. <laughs> you know, what do you call it, Rupan? Uh, blew out of the fireplace and went to sleep i think yeah he went to sleep didn't he with fujiko just over there and <laughs> they trick him into thinking that fujiko ran away with the statues while it actually was not that case um the other guys had uh the statue and fujiko you know with them which like, you know, which, which, and then the whole, like, you know, the, the, the uh, snowmobile blows up. And then Lupin suddenly starts bombing the whole place. Like, <laughs> like, and that's what I'm saying, you know, like, this episode was all over the place. Like, uh, yeah, I can see this is, you know, this is, uh, what's his name? Osumi? Yeah, Osumi is, yeah, I can see this, this really resembles all the other episodes that I've been seeing in part one. A very different from episode 12. Like, this is all over the place, like, so many things are happening, and it's, like, full chaos, this episode. And, <laughs> and then, you know, like, he starts <laughs> blowing up the houses using the, I think that's a mortar, you call that a mortar, I think. You know, the, the thing that is on the, you know, like, yeah, it is a mortar, something like that. Starts blowing up the whole place, and, my god, and then... <laughs> Yeah, and then they start try to like you know get out of that place using like you know like kind of split off uh hayate uh, was in the car i think yeah 
and and that big, big car and others were in the uh, snowmobiles they try to get away but obviously they you know had their minds set up uh it blows up in their face now here's one thing that obviously we could see that Hayate did here like he, he was very loyal obviously we can see that you know he was very loyal to the organization he he did not like you know he knew that he made a mistake and that's why he, he did not want to give away the statues either so he just like you know went to the blowing uh, uh went to the the car that was going to blow up and he gave his life over there and uh, yeah the, the the statue blows up and fujiko's like ha i got my thing here here are the here are the maps goodbye and it just goes away and in the end we see like that that map in itself was also fake the, the old man says that oh i'm the one who had the last laugh he gets the money he gets the map and he's like yeah like from here onwards i'll just chill you know a good retirement is waiting for me like <laughs> good for him i have to say like you know he was just like an odd he was an ordinary like you know old man and he did win by the end of it you know and <clears throat> yeah like well deserved i have to say like you know he he kept his cool he he kept his courage with him and in the end he won and i feel like yeah i feel like it it uh it went like you know like he 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 deserved that he deserved that you know after all that he, he kind of deserved that so good for him he, he got the money like neither fujiko got it nor uh rupan got it and he'll also probably get the treasure eventually <laughs> so yeah like he did say in the beginning that i will be the one who will have the last laugh and yeah that did come true <laughs> so okay yeah that was that was this episode mm, it's very clear you know like like uh the episode 11 and episode 12 it's very clear who did which one you know which was um which was Miyazaki's, which was uh, Osumi's, it was very clear. And I can, you know, always like, I can, I can understand. And I'm guessing from here onwards, everything will be Miyazaki and Takahata, I think. Yeah, from here onwards. So, yeah, I love Ghibli movies. I'm looking forward to the upcoming episodes. And uh, I liked episode 11 as well. So, yeah, so that's it. So thank you guys for watching. This was my reaction to Lupin the Third. Uh, part 1 episode number 11 and 12 so if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to press the like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed and comment down below anything you want to say anything you want to let me know and i'll check them out so yeah that's it and thank you guys for watching uh, i'll see you guys next week with two more episodes of rupan the third part one until then goodbye and have a nice day